yatapita yana mwisho oh sorry sorry hello guys welcome back to our channel and uh, in our today's lesson we are going to analyze this beam here that is fixed on its end a it is supported on b c d uh, on the member d e it is overhanging the load subjected on this beam point rod at f of 10 kN udl between b and c of 4.5 kN per meter point rod between b and d that is at g of 9 kN point rod on the overhanging end 3 kN the spans ab 7 meters bc 5 meters cd 4 meters be 1.5 meters now we are required to plot the bending moment diagram for this beam using the moment distribution method very good and subscribe to this channel fixed end moments that's where we are going to begin and we are going to begin with the span a b and for the span a b the fixed end moment at a will be given by w a b squared divided by l squared since that span is loaded with a point load and this is going to be negative since the fixed end moment at a is going to be an anti-clockwise moment so we got it as negative and this will be negative w which is 10 kN, the point rod at f multiplied by a that is uh, 3 meters between a and f 3 meters multiplied by 4 squared that is b divided by l squared the span a b 7 meters therefore 7 squared and that is going to give us a fixed end moment at a fixed end moment of negative 9.80 kilo newtons meter the fixed end moment at b will be given by positive w a squared b divided by l squared and as i always remind you when we are determining the fixed end moment at a we square b when we are determining the fixed end moment at b we square a so this will give us a fixed end moment of positive 10 multiplied by 3 squared which is a multiplied by 4 which is b divide this by 7 squared and that's going to give us a fixed end moment of positive 7.35 kilo newtons meter so that's a fixed end moment at b then from there we go to the span bc so in span bc So in span BC, the fixed end moment at B, which is anti-clockwise, that is FB, will be given by the span BC is loaded with the UDL, and therefore the formula is going to be negative WL squared divided by 12, which will be given by negative W, which is 4.5 kilonewtons meter. So 4.5 multiplied by the span BC, 5 meters, therefore 5 squared divide this by 12 and that is going to give us a fixed end moment at b of negative 9.38 kilo newton meter the fixed end moment at c that is going to be a clockwise moment and therefore is going to be positive clockwise moment it will be given by positive wl squared divided by 12 which will be positive W 4.5 kilonewtons per meter. L is 5 meters, therefore 5 squared. Then we divide this by 12. And that's going to give us a fixed end moment at C of positive 9.38 kilonewtons meter. Good. Then from there I go to the span CD. So for span C D or in span C to D, in span C D, the fixed end moment at C, that is F C, will be an anti-clockwise moment. I will 
and it will be given by negative w a b squared divided by l squared this will be given by negative w which is 9 kilo newtons multiplied by a which is 1.5 meters multiplied by b which is 2.5 we square b and then we divide by the span 4 and we square that and that's going to give us a fixed end moment at c of negative 5.27 so we got negative 5.27 kilo newtons meter then we go to the fixed end moment at d therefore f d that will be given by positive w a squared b divided by l squared likewise square b squared fc and fd a is squared so this is going to give us positive uh, w which is uh, 9 multiplied by a squared that is 1.5 squared multiplied by b which is 2.5 divide this by l squared which is 4 squared and that's going to give us a fixed moment at d of positive 3.16 of positive 3.16 kilo newtons meter so those are the fixed moments in span c d then we go to the span d to e so from there we go to the span d e therefore for span d e So for span DE, the bending moment at D, that is MD, will be given by taking moments about D. Since this is an overhanging end, we are going to have negative 3 multiplied by the distance ED or the span D, uh, DE, which is 1.5. And that's going to give us negative 4.5 kilo newtons meter. So that is it. So we are done with calculation of the fixed end moments in all the spans. Now, after calculating the fixed end moments, we are now going to determine the stiffness factors. So we go to stiffness factors and we are going to begin with the spans BA and BC. So stiffness factors for BA and B, C. Good. Now, the stiffness factor for B, A and B, C will be given by the following. Starting with stiffness factor for member B, A. That is going to be given by 4 E, I divided by L. Since the beam is fixed at A, and therefore this is going to be the formula. And we are going to have 4 E multiplied by i on the member a b is 3i so we multiply that by 3i and then we divide by l that is the span a b which is 7 meters and that is going to give us a stiffness factor on that member of 12 e i divided by 7 so that is the stif stiffness factor for member b a then we go to stiffness factor for member BC. So BC, we are going to have 4EI divided by L. Since the beam is continuous at C, or beyond C it is continuous. And therefore, we are going to have this formula. So applying the formula, we are going to have 4E, the value of I is 2. So multiply by 2I divided by L, the span BC, which is 5 meters. And that is going to give us a stiffness factor of 8EI divided by 5. So, after that, we are going to determine the summation of the stiffness factors, which in this case will be KBA plus KBC. And this will be 12 EI, 
12 <coughs> EI divided by 7 plus 8 EI divided by 5. So when we add these two, they give us a stiffness factor of 116 EI divided by 35. So that's how we determine the stiffness factors. From there, we are going to determine the distribution factors for members BA and BC. Distribution factors for BA and BC. Now, starting with the distribution factor for member BA, we are going to have distribution factor for member BA will be given by stiffness factor for member BA divided by the summation of stiffness factors. And this is going to be 12 EI, 12 EI over 7, divide this by summation of stiffness factors, that is 116 EI divided by 35. So when we do so, we are going to get a distribution factor for member BA, a distribution factor of 15 over 29. So we got 15 over 29. So that is the distribution factor for member BA. Then we go to distribution factor for member BC. And the distribution factor for member BC will be given by stiffness factor for member BC divided by the summation of stiffness factors. Summation of K. And that will be given by stiffness factor for member BC, that is 8EI divided by 5. So we got 8EI divided by 5. We divide this by the summation of stiffness factor, which is 116EI over 35. So divide that by 116EI all over all over 35 and that is going to give us a distribution factor for member BC of 14 over 29 so that is the distribution factor for member BC then from there we go to stiffness factors stiffness factors for <coughs> members CB and CD C, B, and C, D. And in this case, the stiffness factor for member C, B will be given by 4, E, I, all over L. And this will be, all. this is because the beam is continuous at B. So that's the formula. And this is going to be 4E multiplied by I for member BC is 2, 2I. So we multiply that by 2I and then we divide that by span BC which is 5 meters. So we divide that by 5 and when we do so this is going to give us 8EI divided by 5. Then we go to stiffness factor for member CD and that will be given by this formula. 3EI divided by the span L. 3EI says the beam is overhanging beyond D. So this will give us 3E multiplied by I. CD, I is just I <coughs> divided by L, the span C to D, that is 4 meters. And when you do so, that's going to give us 3EI divided by 4. Then we determine the total stiffness factors for those two members. Summation of K, that will be given by KCB plus KCD. And this will be equal to 8EI, divide this by 5. We add 3EI divided by 4. And when we do so, we are going to get... A total stiffness factor of 47 EI divide this by 20. 
So that is the summation of stiffness factor. 47EI divided by 20. Then after getting the values of the stiffness factors, we are now going to determine the distribution factors for members CB and CD. Distribution factors for CB and CD. And starting with the distribution factor for member CB, which will be given by stiffness factor for member CB divided by the summation of stiffness factors. And this will be given by 8EI divide this by 5 divided by the summation of stiffness factors 47EI divide this by 20. And when we do so, we are going to get a distribution factor for member CB being equal to 32 all over 47. Then we determine the distribution factor for the member C to D. So distribution factor for CD that will be given by stiffness factor for member CD divided by the summation of stiffness factors or the total stiffness factor which will be equal to stiffness factor CD that is a 3 EI over 4. So 3 EI divided by 4. Then we divide this by summation of stiffness factors which is 47 EI over 20. And this is going to give us a distribution factor for member CD of 15 all over 47. So that's it. Then finally, we determine the distribution factor distribution factors for members DE and for members DC and DE and as we said in our previous uh, in our previous uh, lesson or in our previous video the distribution factor for member DC will be equal to 1 that will be one and that of the member d e is going to be zero so when we have an overhanging end the distribution factor for that end is zero and the other end which is not overhanging is one so we now have all the fixed end moments and the distribution factor so from there we are now going to fill our uh, distribution table we distribute and then we get the final support moments which will guide us to plot the bending moment diagram.